Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and or listening to the podcast and welcome to my house. It's time for another ServiceNow Store Highlights episode. That's SSH version 0209 2024. And we've got a light one here for you. You can see, actually before we get started on this episode, let me give you a sneak peek into what I'm working on for the February 1st ServiceNow Store release. It was massive, massive, and it's still being... I'm still reviewing everything, and so let's just take a peek at it real quick. There were in that one, um, actually I don't see my application total, let's go back here, 813 new or updated applications on February 1st. And you can see the breakdown here in the middle of the screen. Um, I won't read out because all this is going to change, but I have 410 applications left to review. That means I've gone through over 403 of them. Um, new releases, highlights, compatibility updates, minor updates, and fixes. So that's coming out. Keep a lookout on my channel for that. But in the meantime, everything that got released after February 1st and since our last episode, which was uh, February 2nd, 2024, 0202 2024, um, there are 58 new or updated applications in the ServiceNow store. And the breakdown is right here on the screen. We've got in this episode, eight compatibility updates, four fixes, 16 highlights, 17 minor updates, 10 new releases, and three release notes fails. So let's jump into this episode. Let's take a look at those compatibility updates first. You can see we've got eight of them. I'm just gonna read them off the screen here. Brightfin Cloud, Brightfin Fixed Telecom Management, Brightfin Foundation, Brightfin Mobile, Edgile ARC Base Tables, High Five Premium, Office Templater, and Service Graph Connector for Extra Hop, Reveal, parentheses X, all had updates to Utah, Vancouver, um, and I don't think any of them, well, yeah, none of these were Washington, D.C. just yet. Now, ServiceNow has done a bunch of Washington, D.C. compatibility updates, but most of these are third parties, and we're kind of getting to Utah or Vancouver. I think the, um, uh, one of these, I can't remember which, I don't want to call somebody out for it wasn't, but like it was like um, San Diego was the last thing they had certified, so it was a pretty big jump. But that's the compatibility updates. There were also four fixes. We've got calendar component from Tenon, Cisco Intersight Incident Management Integration, Morpheus Catalog, and Process X all had uh, just minor fixes in them. With regards to minor updates, we've got a little bit longer of a list here. Cisco PLSS or Partner Lifecycle Services Support, CMMC NIST 800-171 Vendor Compliance Assessment, Computer Center Service Desk Integration, Cyber Reef Form Component from Tenon, uh, or Tenon, sorry, I'm just realizing I'm saying it wrong, License Analyzer, List Component from Tenon, Mobile SDK Libraries from Android and iOS, My Assets Validation, Notifications Component from Tenon, Own Recover Connect, and I'm scrolling down for the last little bit here. Pager duty for customer service management, postmaster email routing, regology, regulatory intelligence, sprint planning component from T Tenon, and Sunburn D Sunbird, not Sunburn, Sunbird DC Track DCIM connector all had minor updates to their applications in the ServiceNow store since our last episode. Uh, release notes fails are the last category to just kind of run through here. Barcodes TrueView, CMN, CMMC Accelerator, and Service Graph Connector for OT Base. A release notes fail is the version number incremented or changed for the application, but there were no release notes or relevant release notes that can tell us what changed. And so for the purpose of review and sharing with you, it is a fail because I can't tell you what the heck changed about it. So that brings us to our exciting new releases. We'll just start right on these. Audit Up is the first new release in this episode. Real-time user activity monitoring in service now. Key features for this application monitor tables and fields, changes via remote update sets, update sets, deleted records, plugins installed, and XML imports. That's a lot of monitoring going on. We have a video and some screenshots. Let's take a look at the screenshot. First is the application menu for audit up, showing uh, their guided setup is what's highlighted. Next screenshot is their guided setup, which is what was highlighted. Now we have a screenshot of a audit up config of what to monitor. And there's the deleted records, installed plugins, tables, update sets, XML imports. 
Uh, next one is the configuration record for what to monitor. Um, it's got some options around the active or not, what the table name is, and whether to include remote update sets via the update sets. Next one is an event form, so showing that there's a new event and it has a life cycle of being in progress or closed. And then there's a dashboard for audit up, showing some KPIs or single scores on the dashboard. And then there's some properties, a property screenshot showing all the configuration options for the audit up application. And lastly is the support options for um, the audit up team at support at dev-hd.com. And then there's the video. You're watching or listening to a video, so I won't play another one. Um, but that is what's new from the team at DevHD Germany GmbH. Uh, next up on our list of new releases, Bright Pattern, and I didn't memorize the whole thing, Bright Pattern Omnichannel Communications for ITSM, communication and automation plugin for ITSM platforms, integrating ServiceNow with the Bright Pattern Cloud Contact Center. Let's scroll down here for key features. Oh, I've got a, like a huge list of key features. I'm not going to read all of this, so I'll try to summarize here. Meet your customer on any channel. Uh, automate more self-service tasks, streamline agent work usage, identify and protect users with built-in contact recognition, resolve device issues directly and quickly with native remote assist, eliminate password reset headaches for Microsoft Azure Directory users, and leverage comprehensive contact center features including service queuing, agent routing, performance metrics, and QM, supervisor monitoring, and interaction reporting. Wow, that's a lot of good, good uh, key features so people understand what this is. Now I'm pulling up the screenshots for this application, and we've got the Service Operations Workspace, which looks kind of funny to me. It doesn't look like the one I'm used to seeing. It looks like an older version. Uh, maybe it's a themed version of the Service Operations Workspace because uh, I thought the old ones are gone. But it's showing a record of an incident, and then on the right-hand side is like a pop-up uh, or modal of what looks like to be the contact center functionality or stuff like so we got a call information and a, a chat message and voicemails going back and forth actually to be specific interactions calls messages records and resolution in that little pop-up there oops i went too fast um, and then okay so it zooms into that pop-up i was just trying to describe and has little uh annotations showing the different sections of the pop-up so that's a very interesting screenshot you should definitely take a look if you're interested in that and then the next one is showing the built-in knowledge base into that same pop-up modal so accessing knowledge articles directly from there then there's showing support in the classic UI. So outside of a workspace, same pop-up, uh, looks the same, uh, yeah, it looks exactly the same. So that is in the classic UI. And then control for multiple records. Um, and I don't know quite that that means, but uh, they're showing a screenshot of the different records or associated records with that particular incident. And then the service operations workspace ready. Um, so the pop-up modal has like a phone dialing, um, graphic there so it's ready right you're available you're ready you could take a call and let's see and then we're back to that workspace view for this new application from the team at bright pattern incorporated and let's see next up csdm as code is our next new application update and manage your cmdb from your git repos uh, key features here dynamic branch and file name filtering to only process relevant yaml files configurable yaml schema to csdm entities in the cmdb including relationships with predefined templates and event register based feedback mechanism for success slash failure of processing results they've got screenshots as well first up is going to be a csdm as code entity mapping list so we've got the YAML entity, for example, of business applications mapping to the business application or CMDBCI business app table in ServiceNow. Uh, so just showing that list view. Then there is the entity mapping record for the for a microservice is this one example. Um, so there's field mappings and child mappings on that one. Then there's an example of a YAML file. Um, showing all the different uh, business applications and microservice that were just in the previous screenshots. Next is the CI relationships or a diagram view of CIs and how they're related to each other. And then we're back to the entity, entity mapping list for this new app from the team at rapdev.io. All right, next up on the list here we have 
IBM Skills Foundation. Revolutionize talent management through comprehensive skills taxonomy and a developmental platform. Key features on the functional side, there's 2,400 plus skills aligned to 3,700 plus predefined job templates across 16 industries, skill specific statements to measure proficiency, interview questions, coaching tips, and learning tags. To support that on the technical side, a survey feature to gather subject matter expert or SME feedback on job skill and proficiency alignments, side by side comparison view to collaborate skills, calibrate, not collaborate rate, skills and proficiency levels across related job roles, and APIs to share taxonomy with other HCM applications. Uh, No screenshots on this one, but that is what's new from the team at IBM Consulting Global. Next up from New Rocket is New Rocket Retail Communication and Task Management, Streamline Retail Operations, Cut Cost, and Boost Service Quality. Key features on the functional side again, Decentralized Content Task Management, Targeted Communication and Tasking, Multi-Level Reporting. On the technical side, Content Management System, Ad Hoc Audience Creation, and Engaging User Experience. A no screenshots for that one, so that's what's new for the team at New Rocket LLC. Next up is Obsidian Security integration, manage posture and mitigate threats across your SaaS applications. Key features for this application, identification of potentially compromised accounts, identification of application misconfigurations, enablement of compliance auditing and reports, and incident response and threat hunting. They've got screenshots. First one here is going to be of guided setup for this new application, uh, Obsidian Security Alerts. Then there's a screenshot of the schedules, and in there, that list view is an integration health scan. And then back to uh, guided setup of the integration account, I guess. Yeah, so there's two screenshots of guided setup and one screenshot of the schedule. And that's what's new for the team at Obsidian Security. Next up on the new releases, it's going to be Secure Works Tagus SIR Sync Integration. Secure. SecureWorks Tagus combines security analytics and human intelligence to deliver superior detection and unmatched response. Key features, create tickets for new security investigations and keep them up to date with bi-directional synchronization. Easily click through to ServiceNow tickets from Tagus XDR investigations. Configure update settings and field value mapping from the Tagus platform. Synchronize comments with work notes so that users in both systems can collaborate effectively. And maintain ticket and investigation hygiene by keeping closure state and priorities in sync. They have screenshots. Let's move past that video. First up is a screenshot of looks like Tagus. Uh, I don't think this is service now, so it's a crypto mining infection investigation in Tagus. Then we have a screenshot of service now transform histories list. Next is a the video that I'm not going to show you a video, but uh, yeah, so just two screenshots and a video and that's the new app from SecureWorks Incorporated. Next up is going to be tier 44 EM slash AQS. Extend hardware asset management with a graphical rack view for easy auditing. Key features, visible rack audit content directly with, or no, visualize, not visible, visualize rack audit content directly with ServiceNow using the tier 44 EM slash 8 client side rendering engine and accompanying experience. It augments hardware asset management asset audit functionality. You can quickly complete an audit using the tier 44 quick scan UI experience. Unlimited visualization, so no limit on the number of users or rack audits. It's free to download and use. And if you'd like a demo of the application, please contact tier 44. Um, this is interesting, free to download and use. I, I hadn't seen that before. I wonder if that means we could put it in our PDIs. That would be cool. Um, I don't see anything around that, but uh, we have to request the app, so I doubt we could put it in our PDIs, but it does say free. And that's what's new in the team at Tier 44 Technologies Incorporated. Second to last one on our list of new releases, VR integration add-on for OT Base. And the description says vulnerability response. Not a great description, just saying. Um, key feet, this is probably like the weakest. <laughs> this, I can read all of it. The summary is, provides vulnerability response for OT-based data to be used in conjunction with the OT-based service graph connector. Key features, provides vulnerability response data for the OT-based service graph connector integration. Um, and that's it. Uh, we've got a screenshot, well, we've got a picture that they're certified by ServiceNow. We've got a picture or a screenshot of, looks, looks like a workspace showing OT vulnerabilities, like a landing page in a workspace. Uh, then I've got a screenshot of the watch topics. That should be in the vulnerability remediation workspace or management workspace. Um, discovered items, a list view of discovered items. A video with a nice man talking about vulnerability manager 
workspace and back to our graphics showing that they are certified. So that's what's new from the team at Langner Incorporated. Next and last on our list is XAI.now. It can use on-premises safe and secure generative AI and NLU to enhance the customer and employee experience with improved data consistency and automating manual tasks. Key features, seamless integration, data security and flexibility, tailored training, cross-department enablement, effortless knowledge building, enhance productivity, scalability, and empower your team. Now, for those of you who are listening, there's a bunch of other text on the screen for each of those key features. I just read like the little bold part. Uh, so if you're interested in this uh, app application, you might want to go read the rest of those key features. Um, we do got one screenshot. We do have one screenshot, not got one screenshot. And it is showing um, the use cases and uh, the kind of flow of taking a, a requester and working on the requests and incorporating knowledge and um, the workflow engine and service desk agents. So um, definitely interesting. Um, more AI stuff in the store. And uh, great. That's what's new for the team at T Cloud Consulting PTYLTD. All right. And that's the list of our new releases, which brings us to our highlights. We've got 16 highlights to power through here. Let's get started. The first one is gonna be Alluvio Eternity Incident Integration, updated version 3.0.0. It's now supported as part of the incident view in the service operations workspace. Configure the app to include Eternity data and capabilities in the classic incident view or the service operations workspace incident view Workspace Incident View, or both. Additional enhancements and improvements in this release. It's now possible to display Eternity tabs for a device other than the most recent one used by the user when bind by user. It's now possible to choose the attribute of the incident computer field in service now by which you want to match Eternity device to get its data when bind by computer. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the new stuff for the Alluvio Eternity Incident Integration. Next application in our highlights is Aptio, Application Total Cost of Ownership, or TCO, updated version 1.0.3, and it's an enhanced version of the original application. It removes the previous dependency on any old ITFM or IT financial management plugins and sources Aptio's business application TCO into the new APM TCO framework, APM being Application Portfolio Management, a product by ServiceNow. Um, it's a set of tables, indicator scoring, and new dashboards. Next up on our list is going to be Aqua Security Platform Integration with Vulnerability Response for Containers, updated version 1.1.3, and in this version they've added support for on-prem Aqua instance using mid-server, also support for on-prem Aqua instance credential configuration, and they fixed something about the container count. Next up is going to be, I didn't look at the name again, <laughs> Book and Pay. Uh, updated to version 4.6.2, and in this version there's changes to the trust portal, bug fixes, and refinements to the booking page. Next up is going to be checks, marks, CXSAT, CXSAST vulnerability integration, updated to version 1.0.19. This version will bring up LOC details of scan from CXSAST and map it to static scan size column of scan summary table of ServiceNow. This version will bring up all the vulnerability from the CXSAST, including duplicate similarity ID, and will also update the source AVIT ID of existing AVIT in SNOW uh, ServiceNow to combination of similarity ID plus hash of path node, line, column, file name. I feel like an engineer or a developer wrote those release notes, but they're not empty and they have something to tell us that this is a major release and something's changed. So thank you for the team at Checksmarks LTD. Next up is also from Checksmarks. It's the one vulnerability integration updated to 1.0.18. In this version, the project tags information from CX1 has been added in the source APM ID of app release table of ServiceNow. Vulnerabilities with critical severity will also be imported if it will appear in CX1, and plugin will skip the deleted scan ID and will not fail. Uh, next up is Doc Integrator. Doc Integrator was updated to version 2.8.607. And this what's new, Doc Integrator administrators can configure Doc Integrator to use slash create SharePoint folders to store files uploaded from the Doc Integrator widget. What's updated is you can download all files in the Doc Integrator widget instead of the files on the displayed page. Improved file upload user interface, list view enhancements including configure default zip file name for file downloads, additional validation for SharePoint folder structure and default zip file name configurations, 
disable slash enable search features, and there's transaction logging for SharePoint Cloud and on-premises instances. What's fixed is some SharePoint on-premise configurations, users have experienced file corruptions when downloading files, and that issue has been resolved. Next up on the list is going to be Flexera 1. Flexera 1 was updated to version 1.2.501, and in this one, they, let's see, uh, new Flexera 1 app for IT visibility, Flexera 1 dashboards in service now, um, app supports a new Flexera dashboard, including two dashboards for Flexera hardware and software. The new dashboards focus on your inventory data in ways that alert you to risk and highlight trends in your hardware and software assets. They also provide you with quick shortcuts to pre-filtered views of your hardware and software related tables when you want to dig deeper into the data shown in the dashboards. There's improvements to views and menus um, you might need most right at your fingertips. With this release, they've improved the default form view so that the information you need most appears in the first columns while the columns themselves are ordered into natural groupings. The first columns show the fields that are most relevant to the data mapped in ServiceNow on Flexera's import tables. It also supports the ServiceNow Vancouver release, so another compatibility update from the team at Flexera Software Incorporated. Next up, Job R was updated to version 3.2.0, and in this version they support the rubric CDM version 6 and above, pre-calculated job duration and GB transferred to assist with anomaly detection, new graphs to show the top 10 servers by job duration and GB transferred, does that mean gigabytes? Uh, gigabytes transferred, dashboard alert if connectivity to backup server is lost, other changes, various bug fixes, and performance improvements in that release. Next up is the plugin for Big ID Data Exchange App 1.2. Uh, 1.2 adds the following enhancements. Support for Amazon S3 or S3 V2, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Dynamo DB data types, business owner field sync, the owned by field value is synchronized to populate the business owner field in the Big ID platform during the import process, from ServiceNow to Big ID, synchronize data catalogs functionality from Big ID to ServiceNow, and they implemented a feature to synchronize selected data sources to and from Big ID through import and export processes. Next up is going to be Power BI Connector, it was updated to version 1.6.2, and in this version, alternative authentication method via JWT, UI UX improvements, and some minor bug fixes. Uh, next is going to be the Service Graph Connector for Bionic, was updated to version 1.0.07, added integration settings page to the guided setup, and added API filter system property to allow a customized query to be used with the Bionic API to filter which services you want to import into ServiceNow. Next up, Service Graph Connector for CrowdStrike, updated to version 2.0.0, and they've added support for application detail, unmanaged, managed, and IoT assets, and they've added support for multiple profiles with unique timestamps and filtering options. Uh, next is the Tenon Marketing Work Management application, updated to version 3.1.0. In this version, they've updated notifications to allow for at mentions, updated forms to include a record watcher, and updated lists to enable inline and bulk editing. Next is going to be Vivid Charts. Vivid Charts was updated to version number 1.6.0. And in this version, whew, some platform improvements, default settings for chart style options were updated for better initial experience. A trend table now allows for the columns and rows to be swapped. The heat map chart type now allows for conditional coloring. And a new admin dashboard was added for monitoring the consumption of monthly reports on the report type. On the new chart types, there's a Chevron flow chart and a trend score, and there's a bunch of fixes. They've improved the way regression trend lines are drawn, so they respect the top and bottom axis. Summary conditions are properly saved when editing setup, even if all steps are not reviewed. Dynamic filter search bars appropriately respect filter conditions used to build the filter. The stage field on the demand table is now available with a condition builder. Single project Gantt chart now updates appropriately based on the conditions and chart options selected. Report generator filter options get updated when a refresh action is made on the views data. Firefox specific issue where no back arrow was present in the viewer is fixed. And on the RIDAC list chart, risk now display type when it is one of the selected mapped fields. Love, love, love the release notes. Even for a minor release, 
from the Vivid, Vivid Charts team. Great, great job on the release notes. Last on our list of highlights is going to be Wiz Integration for Configuration and Compliance updated version 2.2.0. They're calling it a minor version and includes feature enhancements such as adding more filtering options to the integration of Wiz using it. It, with issues fetching into the integration of cloud configuration findings. A project column in the discovered items table was added to which the associated projects from Wiz will be mapped, a new application logo, and an unmatched configuration item bug fix. And that is our highlights, everyone. We have gone through the entire episode. You have just seen or listened to 10 new releases, 16 highlights, 8 compatibility updates, 17 minor updates, 4 fixes, and 3 release notes fails. And also another reminder, don't forget to stay tuned for that February 1st story release that has over 800 new or updated applications from ServiceNow, but I got this episode out in the meantime while I'm still processing that. I hope you found this video or podcast helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in what's new or what got updated in the ServiceNow store. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.